pretty perfectly. Both the ascending passage and all four of the King's Chamber passage and the Queen's Chamber passages are actually going to come to the outer ones. Like I say, I mean, I think we, we long suspect that the ancients knew a hell of a lot more than we do. They tell us that, or they try and pretend that we're advancing because we've got, you know, an amazing gadget in our pockets. Um, and we can communicate to the other side of the plane. But I think we're actually going backwards in terms of, you know, real knowledge, real life, real science. You see a pattern starting to form, which we're quite familiar with. You say, well, you know, this is new age, sacred geometry. It's just geometry. Circles, lines, triangles, squares. It's perfect geometry. It's how you build a building. If God is the creator, whoever you think God is, I mean, it's pretty obvious he's a creator. That's one thing that the flat earth does reveal to us. It's not, we're not, we're not randomly, you know, <laughs> we haven't randomly, a, rock, a load of rocks started, a load of dust started spinning and then it became rocks and then rocks started clumping together and became a planet. Yeah. Not very likely. There is a creator. And the creator is going to design something with perfection. And that's what, um, yeah, that's what I, I thought. The Bible says the earth has four corners. I could say the earth is almost definitely two equal halves. We know that from, you know, people's travel. So we put all that together. And we can start to see an interesting idea. The Bible also says the earth is on pillars. Now, whenever you've seen pictures of the earth on pillars, it's these long leggy things outside it. Probably not likely to support it. Again, like I say, I've animated all this uh, on a video. But for now, we're just going to get the next picture along. Seven pillars. Seven pillars to support the earth. I looked at, when I originally started an animation, I looked at the square Mercator, or a rectangular Mercator. The problem with this for me is that the equator is the longest line of latitude. Again, by people who, people who navigate, people who, we, we, we've traveled for thousands of years, millions of people travel all over the earth all the time, shipping on air now. The equator is the longest line. As you go away from the equator, north and south, the lines of latitude get smaller and smaller. So whilst the idea of the four-dimensional earth, the repeating space, these free energies, I don't agree with, he likes the rectangular, rectangular model. I think it's more of a diamond, um, something around, around that. But what I actually did was put that with the pyramid, or the double pyramid. And what we get is something like that. Say it's a repeating space, there are no edges as far as we're concerned. This is how it looks to God, if you like, or I suppose this is how it looks to God. Earth on pillars. Obviously, I don't think there's a flower of life drawing there. It's the deep. The deep is probably waters. Lots of ancient myths say the earth is supported by turtles. It's on the back of turtles. Um, we've also got Hercules holding up the earth. Again, another plausibility. We know that the uh, firmament is also on pillars. There are pillars of heaven. God likes the number seven and he likes the number 12. That's why I drew it with 12 pillars. And if you can just make out there, here at the bottom, I have put a firmament over it. So there is definitely some kind of firmament. Probably a flat one. Maybe, maybe not. All the idea of this is to show you it's a different idea to what we've been used to. Go with it, see where it goes. Try something else, try your own ideas. Yeah. 
don't have to go along with the manufactured consensus. I know from my own personal research that the Circle Earth, the, you know, the, the, the AE model, is, is flawed. And, it, and because it's flawed, it stops the flat Earth realization growing. I'm not saying the diamond model is correct. Could be something else. But when we keep promoting that Circle model, it's so easy, it's such a good, easy straw man for people to, um, you know, attack or, or prove wrong that they don't, they, don't, they don't then get off the ball. I'm just going to show you very quickly some animations. So I'm going to end. Um, Blender. How astronomy works with a two-poled equal model. Although we still seem to be on that. Why is that? Let's just end the show. Yeah. Because one of the, uh, again, one of the biggest criticisms of the circle dome model is how do the stars work? How do the two-pole stars work? Um, first of all, you get, well, uh, there aren't two pole stars. Yes, they are. Oh, well, they're just, it's the same stars, but they're reflected. No, they're not. They're different stars. Or oh, it's just a personal sky that follows you around. No, it's not, because we've been able to make astronomical predictions for thousands of years. Ptolemy's Almagest stood for 1,400 years, all eclipses, planetary movements, etc., etc. So it's very, very simple with this kind of model. And as you can see, we're looking north. And the stars simply rotate around, somewhere around there, the North Pole. Yeah, Polaris is about half a degree off it. Uh, so we look east. The stars rise. As we look west, uh, sorry, as we look south, as we know, the stars rotate clockwise around a southern pole. No need for reflections, no need to you know, obfuscate or anything like that. That's simply how, this is, this is what we actually observe. You look west, the stars set. If we looked up, okay, we can see the planets there as well, but the stars go straight overhead. Again, with the dome model, there is nowhere where the stars would go straight overhead. They'd always be circling tighter and tighter. There'd only be one pole. Very, very simple, very, very easy way of showing how astronomy works. Observable known astronomy that thousands and thousands of people all over the earth observe with some kind of two pole model. Whatever the shape of the land, whether it's this diamond or whether it's a square or whether it's whatever it is, it could be an oval. Two pole stars. Okay, one more. I'll show you how the solar system works. Because there is a solar system, planets go retrograde. Again, observed astronomy will tell you that. People, you know, you can go, well, the planets don't exist, or you know, what have you. But you go into study them. You actually study what is observed and what has been observed for thousands of years. You will see that there are certain things that have to fit in with known observations. So obviously, we've got the sun going across. Let's put the moon on. Moon. Moon. Yep. I believe the moon is lower and smaller than the sun, but obviously from, where, from the way we see it on Earth, it looks the same size. That's because of the eclipses. Eclipses this also explains why eclipses go from west to east, because the sun moves faster than the moon. And also why eclipses can be seen, you can get them right at the poles. And get them right at the north, just touching the North Pole, just on the South Pole, because of the difference in height between the sun and the moon, and obviously they will both uh, travel between the tropics. Just one sec. Planets on. Moon.
Mercury, we see transit the sun. It goes across the face of the sun from time to time. It never transits the moon. So, that must be how it goes. Same with Venus. Venus we see also transit the sun from time to time, but not transiting the moon. Can you see that quite clearly? You see the circles, yeah. Um, Mars, we don't see transit the sun. Mars must be circling outside. Outside of the length of the Earth. Obviously, it doesn't drop into the ocean either. There are seven planets. I've only animated five of them. I believe there are seven outer planets, the Uranus and Neptune. I don't believe Pluto is a planet. I think they've made that up to throw us off the scent. But that's what we're all shown as children. Solar system. Yeah, so it's exactly the same, except we've got a flat Earth and the solar system is actually perpendicular rather than we're all on the same horizontal plane. The planets go around the sun as the sun crosses the Earth. It's a geo-helio system. Again, I've done videos where I go into it in more detail. I just want to show you just, just a little bit um, today. Okay, so I'll wrap up with the last slide. Hopefully it's been informative and something new for a lot of people. famous Illuminati card and we know everything you know somehow everything on the uh, Illuminati cards has either you know most of them have come true showing the twin towers and you know various things it's interesting to note the shape of the earth on there by the way <laughs> it says flat earthers know something they know something but we haven't figured out everything I think it might be decades yet and I think it's worth spending our time being open-minded, talking, not dismissing ideas, not going along with groupthink. Yeah? I can't be in the Flat Earth Club if I don't believe this, that, or the other. Yeah? Be an independent, a genuinely independent person. I pride myself on it. Yeah? It can be hard at times. You, know? you do get a lot, of, a lot of backlash. But people who disagree with you, they're not working necessarily working for the government. Like I say, I'm a musician from Manchester. I have no vested interest. I don't sell T-shirts or books. I sell CDs. <laughs> That's my only one and only plug. Be aware of self-deception. We lie to ourselves a lot. We do. Oh, yeah, I've, I've researched that, though. No, you haven't. You know you haven't. But do it. Keep your feet on the ground. Yeah. It's, it's the only place to put them, unfortunately. But... But keep your feet on the ground, seriously. Keep, keep, keep perspective of um, where we are in terms of you know, the, 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 the flat earth realisation and the rest of the world. The rest of the world think we're kooks. Yeah. Be aware of psychological techniques. Always do your own research. And accept, hey, you might be wrong. I like being wrong if I've been shown better information. I like, oh, wow, what's wrong about that? Thanks for that. It's brilliant. There's a lot of hubris, especially with the internet. You've got to be seen to be really clever and smart all the time. I mean, it wants to sh prove how brilliant they are. That's another thing that social media does that we should be, you know, aware of, aware of. Let's get back to pubs. Reopen pubs. Remain open. Look for multiple verifiable evidence. And let's, like I said, let's work together. Instead of arguing, well, you know, there's flaws in your model, there's flaws in that model. Ah, the Pac-Man, yeah, that's just stupid. Well, prove it, stupid. You've got proof, then fine, no problem at all. If you've got proof of the dome, then let's, you know, let's have it, but there isn't. I can only go off what we know, what we can prove for ourselves. I want to thank you very much for listening to me today. I hope you enjoy the rest of the convention. I hope I get to speak to a lot of you over the next two days. And I'll hand you back to our host, Mr. Gary. You're a superstar. Yeah, it should be.